Hello. Hello. So now we should be properly live. Oh. It's it's nice to see you. Thank you very much for joining me, by the way, because I know it's like ridiculous o'clock in the morning where you are. And, oh, fine. Um, it's not too bad. It's, it's, a, it's a bit extreme, though, but I, so I, I very much appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, so I kind of wanted to have, like, uh, just, like, nice informal chats with people who I kind of see on Twitter and I've seen stuff from. And thank you, Johnny. It's working. I appreciate it. I wasn't sure that it's working, but Johnny said it's working, so I'm happy. Um, yeah, because there are plenty of people who I kind of follow on Twitter who I, I, I don't really connect with but do really, really cool stuff. So mm. I was nice to thought to kind of have a look. And over the past couple of days, I've been kind of um, looking at your, your blog and um, learning some stuff and learning some words that I didn't know existed before. That may, <laughs> may, may, maybe I should have already known about, but I did not. So um, I actually, you're kind of a little bit at fault as well because I've been looking now at stuff such as, as Vega yeah, and yeah, yeah. Vega Light. And I'll be honest, it, I'm, this is probably me just being like totally ignorant, but I had never, never heard of this stuff before. Um, because my background is is not really in any way studying what I do, so so many things that I should know about have completely passed me by. Um, and you 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 uh, mentioned about a, a, if I mispronounce it, please tell me. Yeah, Deneb visualization. Oh, I think you could pronounce it however. Yeah, like. there's a lot of people that say um, Deneb or you know, okay, so pronounce it in all different well, ways. Well, I think I, it. I work with a bunch of people who call um, Azure Asia, so I'm, I'm really so confused by by um, how we pronounce things. But Deneb, the, the Deneb visualization I, I got for, for Power BI, I, um, I, I installed it and I've been working with it, and it's really good fun. Oh, it's, it's so much fun. It's amazing. Um, I should maybe attempt to share my screen again and just to, just to kind of show this for those who, who haven't seen it. Do you predict <laughs> um, it? One second. And um, yeah, I, I had never seen this code before, but luckily it's the sort of thing where you can just copy and paste someone else's and kind of kind of learn from it that way. So I've been producing some very, very basic visualizations um, in, in, in Power BI. So my, I should, when I fall behind on my project, I'll, um, I'll just blame you because I'm doing <laughs> stuff that I, that I shouldn't be doing. <laughs> yes. So what, what is it just, just a, Talk a bit about about you and what you do. What is what's your 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 background? Where do you come from to, into this visualization stroke data type area? Quite by accident, to be honest. Um, so I started out um, with a psych, uh, studying psychology. Um, I didn't get into the honors pathway because I had a baby and that got in the way of studying honors. So I got stuck mm. with this sort of um, social science degree which I didn't mm. know what to do with. I mean, mm. I don't know any social scientists being hired anywhere. And it's a job that doesn't really exist. Fair enough. Um, and so, yeah, I was sort of languishing around, flip-flopping around, trying to work out, you know, where my career path was taking me, where I was going. And, uh, mm. you know, did a lot of uh, admin project support um, coordination, um, uh, project um, management and, um, you know, portfolio management um, sure. analyst roles. And so I, I landed in these sort of reporting analyst um, okay. and sort of business analyst roles um, and sort of came across um, Power BI in 2017 when I was being particularly okay. lazy with a particular <laughs> task. Um, I was looking at ways where you know, I could automate it, but I didn't have to do it myself because you know, if I was going to do it myself, I was out. <laughs> um, Love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And... Um, so yeah, I found Power BI through that way and just mm. fell in love with the tool. I really did. Um, and um, I found my spot because data visualization is that perfect mix of, uh, you know, maths and science, which I was particularly um, mm. enjoyed during school um, mm. and have a bit of a knack for it. And, you know, the, um, the you know, business an analysis and things like that. And your, your sure. creativity, your art, your artistic styling, and then you've got your, your psych, which is your psychology of perception and things like that sort of all rolled into mm. one. Um, yeah, I've just, that's, True that's interesting. Found my way. I can see your artistic side behind you as that oh, well, no, by the way. I assume that's your work. 
No, no, it's very cool. No, it's, it's just cool. doodles. Don't, yeah, don't look at them. Okay, I, will. I won't draw attention to them again. I do apologize. <laughs> I should say, in case my voice starts to go a bit strange, I, I got myself a glass of water to prepare myself for this. So if my mouth starts to go dry, I can have a glass of water. But actually, I was so nervous before it started that my glass of water is like already empty. So, <laughs> so if, if my mouth feels like it's, it, it's starting to get dry, it is because I've got nothing. So I'm, I'm a bit screwed at this point. Um, I find it interesting the amount of people who've kind of fallen into Power BI who just kind of discovered it, as you say, whilst doing a task and that kind of helped them build a, a career or kind of find a, find a job or became a, their passion, you know? Mm. Because I, I kind of, I would, similar myself in that I was, I was working, actually my first ever office job, because you're, 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 in, you're in Australia, yeah? you're in um, yeah. Adelaide, did you say? Yeah. Which I should have checked before I asked you if you want to join. I don't know why I assumed we were in the same time zone. It was like, yeah, okay, so be like an hour difference, no, like 11 and a half hours or something. Nice. Um, I was in Melbourne when I got my first, like, I would say proper office job. Um, I was working for, because before that I'd been working for um, EasyJet. I was like a flight attendant, you know, mm. because I moved to Berlin. And I just wanted money and I didn't speak any German. So I got a job where I could have a job, earn money while speaking no German. And uh, yeah. After like three and a half years, I can I can remember this moment vividly because it was I was someone pressed the call bell and um, they asked me if they could have some Pringles and it was whilst I was explaining the types of Pringles that we had that I stopped in my head and thought this can't no this has got to stop I've got to do something else um, so that I went I was in Australia and I found a job in an office and I kind of fell into looking at numbers and data and then I opened Power Query. And then one of my colleagues said, if you think that's good, you should check out this Power BI thing. And I was like, what is this Power BI madness? I've never heard of such mm -hmm. things. And uh, that's how, how it had started. Um, but I never really got into um, stuff like these, like everyone's really into, into Charticulator at the moment. I've heard it's people, like you posted something about Charticulator the other day as well. Yeah. You've, you've created this beautiful, um, what type of chart is it called? <laughs> it's a uh, it's a uh, pie bar chart. Absolutely, pie bar chart. Me. <laughs> Love it. A pie bar chart. <laughs> it would be it would be wonderful in politics because they love all forms of pie charts and politics. Um, mm. but I never really appreciated Chartic. I always felt a bit like not left out, but I was like, I'm not going to express my opinion because everyone's loving Charticulate that. I just don't feel it to be honest. Um, no, I yeah, I certainly have struggled with it. It mm. I've managed to, you know, create a few simple things and um you know, in the past it works better in the browser than it No, I'm just know. looking at what I just I'm Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Very good. It, it, it works uh, better in the browser um, than it does in the mm. Power BI um, desktop. There's buttons in there that don't even do anything, which I was okay. like, why, what, why is it not doing anything? Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I struggled with it um, a fair bit myself. Um, the, it, it needs a, a little bit of um, a bit of love, I think, in terms of. Yeah, I think that was my thing. But it's strange because one of my issues was if I have these visualizations that are in Power BI that are kind of native and you can get your one or two from the, the you can add up one or two. Why am I going to spend that time using um, using Charticulator? But then I saw your posts about 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 Vega about Dana. I was like, just 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 give it a go. And for some reason, I immediately love that. I'm not sure. Oh, the why. team Dana and Charticulator, yeah. Sure. Demo, the it's easier to debug. So when you're when you're writing your code and mm. something's not quite right, um, you can mm. look through it and see where you went wrong. With Charticulator, you're deleting your 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 your, ch your chart each time you've gone wrong. All right, delete, restart. And by the time the eighth time you've restarted, you're just like, oh. yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, probably true. Um, yeah, that's very no, true. Demo, you can you can read through it, and and you you know you're, you're sitting through a lot of um, sitting in a lot of instructions that are quite um, yeah. Could be it. It's very nice, and I suppose there's just lots of examples. And I think it kind of seems to seem to pose, in a in a nice way, more of a challenge to actually get to actually start writing bits and changing bits yourself. It seemed to be a little more interactive and like, I would say, like a Flexible. nerdy way. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. you can copy, whereas Charticulator you can't just copy little bits. You know what I mean? Copy. 
the copying is the important part, isn't it? It's like, oh, I'll yes. just steal someone else's work. That's fine. And, I, and I'll change one word and it looks so, so much different now. It's very true. Mm. Very far away from that as I was, I, I, I kind of, um, I think it was yesterday, I did that thing that everyone hates to do, but sometimes you have to do it. I went onto your um, LinkedIn page. So I assume mm. you got an annoying notification. A person has visited or been, it's, it's yeah. so annoying. I hate yeah, that. I saw that. Sorry about that. I wasn't being like some kind of crazy stalker. I was just looking yeah, around. I'll stalk you back. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, pseudo profound bullshit. Oh. That is. <laughs> please, please. What? I, I saw that and I was like, that seems like the sort of thing that you hear every day in a meeting. Some pseudo profound bullshit. Um, one second. See if I can come up with something here. Can I share that? I'm trying to I share my screen. Try oh my goodness. This this is this pseudo profound bullshit. Just so I can, if I'm bringing that up on the screen there. Um, what is what is? I'm curious what is going on with that because that's definitely the most interesting thing I've ever read on someone's blog post. I give it. I I once gave a, a speech or a talk about pseudo profound uh, the detection. Sorry of pseudo profound um, bullshit. Um, is, it, is it as easy to detect pseudo profound bullshit as just straight up profound bullshit? Is the pseudo, <laughs> does that make it harder? Is it... Well, profound bullshit isn't, is still profound. It's not bullshit. Pseudo profound bullshit is. What, <laughs> do I, but can, what, what's that? Can you give a, a brief? Cause I was just, I know it's pretty, a little bit off topic, but it was on your blog. Therefore I'm going to ask you about it. I'm just kidding. What, what's that all about? Is it? Can, can you can you do a visualization on bullshit detection? Because that might be a really good makeover Monday or um, W or W. What's it called again? The other one. Someone in the comments, please help me. Sounds like a good uh, challenge. It sounds like a pretty good challenge. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm just picturing all these emojis, these poop emojis, all over the. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling that I've really got. To, I've, I've really got to watch what I say because you you, you got such a good um, bu bullshit monitor. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, it's more to do with, uh, you know, you, you scroll through your LinkedIn, for example, and, you know, someone says something that's supposedly, you know, really profound. I'm trying to think of someone off the top of my head and um, it's just really hard to do at the moment. Um, you know, like, I, I don't want to name people particularly. You can um, name it like, I mean, name me if you want it. It's okay. I don't mean getting called out on, on bullshit and this is perfectly fine. But, you know, those those motivational <clears throat> speeches that, you know, um, I was trying to think of one, you know, like Simon Sinek and stuff will post. Oh, uh, okay. Movie. Like um, Tony Robbins, is that one? Yes, him especially. Mm. Yes, you can, you can, you can call him up because he's so rich he just doesn't care. And I'm, I'm, this point, I'm not sure how many, and there's probably not many people viewing this, so it's, it's, it's quite okay. Don't, don't worry about it. If, I, if, if it was like Guy in a Cube with all their viewers, someone might find out, but, if it, but I think you're safe with me. <laughs> yes, no, the Tony Robbins type that, that starts okay. spewing um, a profoundness, which just is not profound at all in the slightest. Okay, that sounds like, about like, like, like LinkedIn in that case. Yes, very much LinkedIn. Okay, so basically the entire LinkedIn, which is just a... A fridge magnet is um, profound bullshit, yeah. Okay. Oh, gee, yeah. speaking of LinkedIn, um, I remember, because I, I tried studying uh, business like an, an MBA, and I thought, you know, after my psych degree, I thought, I've got to do something. Um, I didn't finish it because <coughs> I was in your um, management theory part of it, and I was reading, you know, the whole uh, theory of decision-making, and mm -hmm. the textbook, the textbook said the best way to make a decision was with your gut. And I'm like, what the hell am I paying $30,000 <laughs> to sit here and be told that I just need to, you know, go get experience and use my gut. And I'm like, oh. That's amazing. And, and, and it was, um, and I was, you know, on LinkedIn at that time as well. And I came across an article that, you know, management is like a toothbrush. I'm like, that's it, I'm out, I'm done. Like, right, get me out of here, I'm, I'm not interested. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. The, 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 use your, the use your good, it sounds like a line from like a, 90s, a 1990s detective show or something, you know? Mm. I've, I've, got, I've got a gut feeling. Yes. Oh, I love that I so much. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I, what's, um, so I, I don't want to make it sound, feel too much like an interview, me just like shooting questions at you, by the way. Just like, so by the way, also, this is like the first one of these like I've ever done. So I would say I know what I'm doing like 5%. 
the rest is just like me like trying to make it like work and trying to make it interesting the general concept was like yeah let's just kind of like chat and talk about what we do and things that we enjoy and things that we don't enjoy um yeah so i'm just kind of going with it at the moment and i was happy when i found your blog because it was full of so many diverse things i wanted to share my screen a little bit more but as soon as i'm as i do everything starts to lag and i don't know why so i'm scared to share my screen now unfortunately oh okay yeah um but if you can i would definitely recommend checking out your blog because it's well obviously not you because you Sorry, check out your own blog <laughs> i just saw a, a comment surely dinner would could build a bs pie. that would be a fantastic idea <laughs> that's my challenge right and i'm just going to start using the and then i can try but i can try to build a bit of bs pie for you man i like it People who are writing comments, by the way, I'm not ignoring them. I'm just not very good at talking and reading comments at the same time. Maybe that, if I do this enough, maybe that'll come with time. But, but at this point, it's, a, it's it's hard enough to, just to kind of look at, at the camera, even though my screen's here. So I kind of feel like I'm looking at the wrong place and my microphone's in the wrong place. There's so many things to consider. Yeah, yeah. I've got a question then. How did I decide to go deep in these pistols? Oh, that's just passion. Where's this, Sarah? How, Kerry, how did you decide to go deep in these biz, biz tools? Problem is I have that. Uh, I see. Uh, yeah, no, that was just passion, um, excitement for um, finally having a tool that I be, you know, have that creative freedom um, with, that. you know, there's so many things I mm. wanted to do in Power BI that I couldn't do. Um, so I was just jumped straight into the deep end, you know, forget the DAX, right? You know, <laughs> Power Query and all that stuff. You know, I, I reached intermediate level and you know, mm. several years ago, and I'm not moving up on from that. Um, I, you know, I try, and I just, I learn, I sit down, and I was like, no, I'm not moving for this now. Yeah. Do something a little bit more I interesting. I understand that. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I just prefer to focus my time on that. It makes sense. So it's a really good point because I think when I first started with Papabi, I think it was a similar, it was like early 2017. And you do kind of want to like, you know, conquer the tool or be as good as you can at all the different things, but there are so many elements mm -hmm. of it. Like I've heard, seen the expression, um, Power BI unicorn, is that a thing? Am I using that correctly? Yes, Someone like, that's the one. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't believe it. I'm sorry. <laughs> If, if someone who, if you can master DAX, then you can master Power Query and, and the visualization side and the admin side. And now, I mean, I've worked with like assistants since 2017 pretty extensively. And I like to think there are, there are certain things I'm pretty decent at. There are certain things I'm terrible at, but I've never even like touched premium because I've never worked for a company that's had premium capacity. And that opens oh. like in a completely other different world. Yeah, like, so that's right. all those third party toolings, which I still haven't. Yeah. Learn how to do it yet myself. Um, I mean, for, for, for the company that I work for, like just from a financial perspective, having premium, I don't want to get down a whole route about is premium good or bad? Of course it's good, but it just wouldn't make any sense. So there are just, there are elements that I just find, and so, sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming. It's certainly when I was like starting to have the idea, okay, I'll do a, like a YouTube channel just to kind of like do some stuff because it's, it's good fun. It's like an outlet, you know? But for so long I was thinking, but what can I add? There are so many channels. There are so many people who like produce videos. And I think whilst I really enjoy making the videos and the, of putting them together and editing them, I have this, I would say like two days of just sheer terror after I publish them and someone's just, and, it, and I'm going to be found out. It's like, this guy, what this is one? he doing? That doesn't make any sense. This is a terrible video and you're a fool. This is you should horrible. have seen the panic attack I had when my first when my blog first got found and shared. I was oh, delete. Where's the delete button? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't ready. No, because it's like it's it, you kind of want to kind of just stay like your thing. Any like Yeah, you yeah, your little corner of the internet, mm -hmm. you know, like a little safe part. Not just I was I was kind of like like shy with it, but also like wanting to not be shy. One of my colleagues, I, a couple of my colleagues know about it when one of the, um, one of the data analysts knows about it and he, he, he provides nice feedback. But one of my, um, another colleague found out and he was a very, very nice guy. And he was like, yeah, Ben, I found a YouTube channel. It's like really good, really good videos. <laughs> There's only one thing missing. I was like, what's that? And he was like, views. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was like, that's brutal, but, 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 but true. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. Power bears, you know, it's not around all the time. Right, this is a good point, though. Like, yeah, ma- master one field or just go, just get... If you're, like, okay at everything, like, fair enough, so, but, yeah, I, it's... Yeah, I would like... Maybe that would be a good challenge to ask the Italians to do, like, a, a, a few videos on M or power, power Query and all that. They'll probably be awesome at it, of course. Um, but, yeah, it's it's kind of like finding the your, your, the thing that you're more, more comfortable with. And at the end, with my, with, my, with, my, with my channel, I just decided to, to just do things that I found fun. If I was like, oh, that was good fun, I'll try and do that. Such as this, what we're doing right now. I was like, this, this, this could be fun. And this also I for me falls into the category. Um, pie chart video. So I was like, oh my gosh, somebody that doesn't hate pie charts. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was scared about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, can, I remember you posting, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm going to have a yeah. rain of terror. Uh, I thought that when I posted the Charticulator one, I'm like, oh God, this is, you know, this is an art. That was cool. Because as you post something that's got arcs in it, you, you're treading hot yeah. water. Yeah, you should. Sure. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> my um the, the the CFO of, of the company with he 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 you messaged me on Teams the next day because you saw on LinkedIn didn't watch the video I'm sure but you saw the the the, the thing on LinkedIn he said we need to talk I hate pie charts that's like, okay <laughs> I'm not all that bad I mean you know it's inappropriate inappropriate uses for me. No, I think the problem with pie charts is a lot of data visualizations is um thank you very much is um that. One second. The coffee. Yeah. yeah. Just to wake up at 5 a.m. The problem with lots of visualizations, but especially pie charts, is that for some reason, and I say this quite often, I don't repeat myself, but I will, um, politics. Why do, yeah. do, do, do the politics visualizations are just the worst things I've ever seen? And they continue to do it. They'll have all these, like, really, um, you know, animated shadows and of course pie charts as well and there's just just no need for it someone should go in to the the politics analysis world and just like shake it up i'm not sure how it's done because it's obviously not one company um but it's just it gives everything a like a bad name so this i think they're, they're perfectly fine with two categories mm. yeah and there's a, there's a hierarchy right so there's a um, you know in terms of encoding visuals and encoding data and so there's a hierarchy mm. of how to do it and a, a level of effectiveness as well as you go down the hierarchy and okay. you know so you've got you know length being the the best to encode data it's the way we can most easily interpret things and then as you go down you've got you know colors and angles and stuff in terms of you know, efficacy mm-hmm. and as soon as you have you know two or three or more variables you then have to start to compromise in terms of that. Okay. So in, in when you have your, your context, right, you've got so many things in your context, you know, your audience, this story that you're trying to focus on, what you want to pull out and, and convey. Um, you know, you've got things like UI and UX and all these other things to, to consider, you know, is it explanatory, is it exploratory, you know, data journalism and all that. Um, and all these things are in your design decisions. So um, when you, you post forward a, a bit, mm. um, you know, someone looking at it, might go well why did you decide to, to take that you know that mm. that option that route in you know it's not you know say for example you've got your scatter plot and you've got your you know, you've got your area your circles um it's quite known that people aren't as good as um interpreting the area of these circles um yeah. in terms of size but you know i don't even know where i'm going with this now it's fine I, I was i was i was enjoying it it was so profound <laughs> Yeah, it was it was like it was like a mini lesson, right? I'm actually just like take that screen record and I'm gonna use it in a future video and just say listen, listen to Carrie as she talks about about this. It was yeah, very insightful. Um <clears throat> you know, why do you choose that over something mm. else? You know, it's not very effective. And you're like, Well mm. yes, that's right, because you know, I'm encoding several several variables and I chose this one over this yeah. lesser effective one as well for, for you know so many different reasons. Um and it's funny with um communication as well because you've got your, your verbal communication and this is one of the uh, one of the really interesting things I sort of um, learned in the last few months as well is that um, 
yeah, you got your, your verbal communication, you encode a message, you deliver a message, you decode your message, and then it gets interpreted on the other side. And there's so many different ways in that mm. communication link that that can, can go wrong. Um, but what I found is that um, it's really interesting when building visuals for myself. So sometimes I just do an exploratory analysis, I build visuals for me. So I, I made a, I haven't finished it yet, but it's sort of a landscape in dinner because I was just being silly, basically. And I thought, oh, I'll just do something different. Why not? Um, but at the end of it, I was actually really surprised at how well I could read this landscape and interpret the data underneath it. And, you know, I was a little bit moved by it because um, the, nice. um, well, I was because the data was about people. Okay. So when I read the yeah. story and read the landscape, it looked like a children's picture book, you know, that one sheep, two sheep, three sheep thing. Um, you know, so I was reading a story in my data about people and I was actually really quite moved and I was quite um, surprised at how well I could read it. But that's because I encoded the data for myself mm. to decode. If someone came along and looked at that landscape, they'd go, what the hell is this? And, you know, mm. you'll see there's a lot of other data um, landscapes out in there on, you know, on the tubes and stuff like that. Mm buildings and trees and stuff like that you look at them like, i don't know what i'm looking at um what's this i can't read this and um, that's mm. because you know you didn't encode it and mm. it's interesting like that yeah um, nice yeah. yeah it's nice to see this is i told you I, I ramble <laughs> no no you please feel free to ramble absolutely i mean it, it's good because you know it keeps it flowing but it was nice because i i don't really have that often because i really just use out of the box visualizations you know and i think maybe this is why i was happy to get in this store i really was enjoying that it was only like 20 24 hours looking at this whole denib and and, and using vega vega light i'm saying these words because i know them now so i'm going to keep repeating them so i don't forget them um i can see how that would might make you you connect to it a bit more and then maybe understand more of this concept of like a a story they use a story because you actually want to really present it not in the ways that you've been given but rather in the ways that you feel like you can that actually best represents that data so it makes sense for sure so i just want to go to this comment by um johnny winder um because i'm not sure what happened because i mean i know what happened but i back at the pie chart thing it was I posted this and this dude, I forget who he was. It was one of these people on um, on LinkedIn who have like 15 job titles and claim to have like 75 PhDs and stuff, you know? Oh, yeah. And he just took complete exception to this bit. This, I think he called me a fool. I'm pretty sure he called me a fool on, on my LinkedIn. <laughs> and what I really enjoyed about it, and Johnny, Johnny said this as well, he was like, he, he posted a link to a, a proper visualization a proper dashboard i swear it was the ugliest dashboard i have oh, seen no. in my entire life it was it was a sort of dashboard that you make because you because actually again that's what i was um, because you can you know like i i i can use all these visualizations and i can make it blue with white lines it was just just hilariously bad and he was like yeah this is this is how how I, you shouldn't use pie charts and this is how a proper dashboard he was really really furious about it. it was pretty funny um i think i deleted it. i should have taken a screenshot before i deleted it unfortunately um but yeah sorry i just saw this I'm comment not, and i couldn't a, uh, i'm not a fan of very bright dashboards no no you wouldn't have been a fan of this one if you've seen it as well but this is a question for you did you, did you use other tools before power bi your work often, that is true. Your work does often have a tableau aesthetic. Yeah. Storytelling. With data. I only saw that storytelling data with book like, um, a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Hmm. Um, you know, why am I bloody writing a blog? I can just give people this. <laughs> I wish I'd found it earlier. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, I was reading through that book and I was like, oh, this is like my head just coming out on the page. <laughs> Uh, even with the doodles, they had hand-drawn hand doodles in there. And I was like, oh, that's so me. Um, cool. The question was, well, I'm gonna um, put it back what other tools did I use before Power BI? Um, I didn't. No? I used, I used PowerPoint and um, okay. Excel. And the most advanced thing I could do in Excel was index match match before that X lookup came on. I was so proud of myself with index match match. I thought I was the bee's knees. Did you say index match match? Yeah. So you, know, you, I got, know your, so you got your V lookup. Yeah, oh, sorry, my fingers are going everywhere. Um, I know, I know, index match, okay. but you said index oh, match. You said match twice. Yeah, 
I've so never, you I've, know who you, mm-hmm. your V look up and then your horizontal yeah. look up yeah. with index match match and I thought oh yeah. I'm so cool yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I suppose pretty cool I've heard a lot about X lookup but yeah. haven't opened Excel in quite a long time to be honest other than to uh, if... yeah no I have went in there recently I thought oh I, really <laughs> I know I, I need a really quick viz on a line chart okay. and I need to you know write my data in I sat there for half an hour because I couldn't remember how to do a line chart in Excel yeah fair enough oh, flapping around I'm like, all right I'll give up I'm going back to the yeah. I think the only thing I've opened Excel for in the past couple is just to, to copy and paste a query into Power Query and I can't even remember why I did that I, created, I had a query in Power BI and someone wanted that same query. And I was like, okay, have, it, have an Excel, paste it in there. It will work. It's fine. And that was it. And what I do like about it, when I go in there, it always, it's, it's, it lives up to its stereotype. And if I have to use it for whatever reason to check something, it will always crash. Nice. And I just, yeah, it's big. And, it, and I'm happy that it crashes because it makes me happy that I don't have to use it very often because of <laughs> me, X, Excel and crash. And just went, I'm sorry. I'm sure there's plenty of people who love Excel. I know that are. But and um, it's it's good it's good for what it does. We all know this. But um, oh, it's it is just the staging data. Just a nightmare. Data. Don't tell everybody. But I'm just... you're like 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 a data warehouse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Your data stays in Excel, and your your fizz goes on top of it, right? Yeah. Why not? Excel. Why not? Yeah. Someone just someone moves the file to a different different location. You want to die a little bit. We can try to refresh it. And nothing works. It's very good. Amazing. Oh man. Yeah. I was. I, I've just. I've just won in, um, in in the work that I do. One of my main stakeholders has moved on from always requesting matrices, and I'm so happy about that. I like to have everything in a matrix. It mm-hmm. makes it brings me so much joy to actually have someone who always Excel as a proper database. Someone someone was going to say that. I I thought so. I'm going to start thinking about Excel. I'm going to say something. And someone's going to re bring this up. Excel is a, it is it is a proper database. You're quite right. I apologize. I'm so sorry. <laughs> No, but like if you start if you start a project and someone says one of the data sources is Excel, you do want to die a little bit, right? I do anyway. <sighs> what is my one second, what is my last name? What is my last name? When I just I'm gonna you know I could answer the question, but I'm gonna tell a story, then I'm gonna answer the question because this is yeah, just right. a, I used to work for um you know BASF, this like huge German, German chemical company. And um, BASF, I should say, not BASF. Anyway, the point is, we'd have like offices like all over the world, and we had a service center in in Berlin, of course, where I live, and one in Montevideo, and one in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, and when I'd send emails to Kuala Lumpur, I would say best regards, and then my name, which is Ben, followed by a surname, which I'll provide soon. They would always, I would say always, half the time, make a spoonerism of my name. So instead of saying Ben Ferry, they would always call me Fen Berry oh. because my surname is Ferry. And I don't understand why they would always send an email back calling me Fen Berry, like Berry was my surname, when in fact Ferry is my surname. And it was always strange to me that I even have people now who call me Fen instead of Ben because the amount of time people call me Fen Barry. The strangest one is I sent an email to, to um, I think it was Nigeria, and I made a mistake with my email footer because it's in English and German, right? And it, would, it said, always it would say, best regards, or the German version, which is mit Freundlichen Grüßen. And I forget the mistake I made now. I think it said best regards, and then underneath the next line was mit Freundlich and Grüßen. So I got an email back. It said, Dear Mr. Mit Freundlich and Grüßen. And I really enjoyed that, that they thought my name was actually the German words for best regards. That was a very, <laughs> very strange thing, yeah. But yes, my name is, my surname is, is, is Ferry. Actually, if you look at most of vid- the videos that I put on Power BI out on my, on my YouTube channel, you will see my, my full name on there because I'm too lazy to actually log out of my Power BI account. So it says Ben Ferry at the top of each one of my um, YouTube videos because that's my name and I'm logged in. And I always forget to kind of like um, blur it out because I can't be bothered. There you go. 
People, yes, Jeff, Jeffrey Weird. That's true. People <laughs> just need to put D at the bottom of his name. I'm sure, I wish, I'm sure no one would ever do that. That would be so rude and disrespectful and such a nice guy. The nice guy part sounded like sarcasm. That wasn't sarcasm. <laughs> just a lot of what I say sounds like sarcasm. Okay, you are a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what I was talking about before I started down the whole thing. Um, my, my, my surname, Ben Power BI guy. Yeah. So, one second. Yeah, I didn't actually set a time for how long this, these things were supposed to last, by the way. I really should have been. I, I said, oh, we should have started at like at half past. And you're like, yeah, no, no worries. So let's see so if we can try and make it go for another eight minutes so we can make it a, like a, a good 45. Do you have another eight minutes? Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Actually, no, I am. But uh, I'm going on holiday. You're going on holiday today. Nice. Yes, out to the country, which will be good. Turn very nice. Off, which will be great. That would be very nice. Are you, sorry, did you say you're staying in the country or going out of the country? Going out to the country. We're staying overnight, which would be good. Ah, very nice. I won't ask you where you're going in case someone like tries to track it down, but I hope you have a very nice time. I haven't been on holiday quite a long time. I loved Australia. I know everyone loves Australia. I really wanted to not like Australia because... I had one of, I lived with Australians when I was in Berlin for the first year and a half. Mm -hmm. And one of them, um, she was really missing home, you know? And she kept talking about how much she was, she's from Melbourne. And she kept talking about um, how wonderful Australia was and how everyone was so nice and it was such a wonderful place and blah, blah. And she said it so much that I just wanted to like her to be wrong. But when I got there, it was a fantastic place. So yeah, I, I do miss it yes. quite a lot. It's uh, very comfortable living over here, but well, in Adelaide yeah. anyway. Yeah, I, no, I didn't go to Adelaide, so I can't comment. I'm sure it's also very wonderful. I did a, the, the, the standard road trip through through the outback and stuff. And I went from Melbourne, and then I went to Darwin, and then I oh. went to the East Coast. And, yeah. Really? You drove? Yeah, it was good fun. I drove out one of these shitty camper vans called Wicked Campers. Have you seen these things? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what was on the side? Buddy Holly. Oh, okay. Uh, which was okay because uh, my, my, my then girlfriend, now wife, she came to um, she visit for, for two weeks. And um, we, we rented, actually that one, the one with the Buddy Holly on the side actually, wasn't the one I did the huge trip on. We went also, I did a small road trip from Melbourne to Sydney to back again. Um, and on the side of that was Buddy. And then so we just called the Buddy. And then we moved back to, I moved back to Berlin and we, we bought our own little camper van and we called it Buddy too. So it just became like a normal thing called all camper vans that we owned a Buddy. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was good. There's, there's it was a good few fun. wicked campers that have uh, some seen things on the side. So thank you. Lots yeah. Of yeah. They try, I think they, I was actually quite lucky. I mean, it was a really like shitty company and um, they're kind of all falling apart, but mine didn't break down, but I was really lucky because I'd hired one of their vans before. So they had all my information on file, my driving license, all this type of stuff. But then the week before I was due to pick it up, my, my wallet got stolen, but they still let me hire the van again because they still had a photocopy of my driving license. So I was able to hire another van, even though I had no driving license or anything, which shows how dodgy they are. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, people are asking proper questions about Power BI and stuff. So I'll uh, put that hi. on before I bore them with my strange stories. Do you use Deneb in your work, Kerry? Or was it still a hobby thing at this stage? I don't know why I'm reading out. You're perfectly capable of reading. I'm just, there you go. Um, so it's mostly ho a hobby. I've used it once in work, which was um, good. I, it's one of those things because it's not in App Source yet or it's not Power BI certified. Mm. Some organizations are quite um, you know, tight around those types of things and they have rules and things in place. Um, but I did have a use case for it. Um, so I did use it in work and I was super excited about doing that. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to use it at work as well, um, just to experiment, but obviously I'm not good at it. That's, a, 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 I should really clarify, I'm not comparing my usage to your usage because obviously you're very good at it, I am not. Um, but I saw this error, this, this warning as well. So I was like, okay, so I have my, my hobby report, which is the um, this fantasy football report, which I use for pretty much everything. That's all test version. So I use it and then hopefully, I, I saw on the website they said that they hope the end of this year, I think they said a Q4, it'll be actually in yeah, the state. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, in there. Is he? Yeah. Is that um, Daniel MP? 
Dan yeah, Daniel got called dinner. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got the power. Um, yeah, and the, the other thing to consider as well with dinner is if you're going to hand your report over to somebody at the end of the day as well, you, mm. they need to understand how to make their own changes to it as well. That's um, a very good point. Yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah. It's true, but I suppose if the visualization, if you create it in the way that the visualization, visualization is stable, but you're quite yeah. right. If at any point someone wants to make any tweak, it's not like Tweets in power. Yeah, yeah, you can't just kind of like use the normal drag format. And I, um, I think it, it's a it's a great tool for the analysts. Um, yeah. that one the people that are exploring their data. Um, That's true more so than, than creating dashboards. I mean, dashboards are mostly KPI figures and stuff anyway. Um, yeah, and the yeah. only sort of need for data in, in that case would be, you know, some people are very, very particular. They have, you know, I want that line. I want that today line. You know, you know don't care how I get it. Um, yeah. You know, some people are very particular about pixels. Can you move that three pixels to the left or right? <laughs> so, oh, I've had some very particular people. Um, yeah. you know, that shade of orange is just a little bit too yellow. Can you make mm. it a bit more? Um, so, you know, for those uh, particular use cases, it will come in useful as well. Yeah. This person got a job. What's this? Thanks to Daniel MP or Daniel Deneb and Kerry. I use it if you and got notified and luckily oh. got a job. That's fantastic. And actually, in the next message down, this person says because of that, that he's going to give you 25% of all of your earnings, which I thought was very, very generous. So that's, this is really, this is great. Great to hear. You love it. I um, no, he didn't say that loud. Sorry. <laughs> um, that's cool, though. I think I, I, I'm currently working on a project that is, is, is okay. It's, and it's part of what I do, but it's not particularly inspiring and I can't use particularly interesting visualizations. So actually I use this project for two reasons. One, to really get started on tabular uh, editor because I'd been using it a bit, but not as much as I should be using. Um, and that made me just completely love tabular editor. And then also um, a little bit of this, just to kind of keep me, keep me going, keep me inspired to actually remember that there's more out there than just matrixes because if you work on a project that lasts quite a long time. Yeah. Sorry. It's, um, yeah, good to have your little side project. Um, like doing things like games in Power BI is a really good way of learning new skills. Especially That's true. if you don't like reading books and stuff like that. Um, I tend to fall asleep after I yeah. read, read two pages of a, a dry book as I start nodding off. Um, but, you know, doing games and things that I learn through doing um, hmm. and it keeps you inspired to do. I remember I saw someone, skills. Yeah, someone who created. Um, Minesweeper in Power BI. I saw this yeah, a few years ago. That, that was that fantastic. That would be Phil C. Mark. Yes, it would have been. Okay, well, I've got time for one last question. Did you write much coding? Did oh, God, no. I, I did no coding or whatsoever before I found Power BI. I was a complete mm -hmm. IT noob. Didn't That's really interesting. Anything tech. I got the I got the impression that you'd you'd you'd, you'd done you'd actually there was this part of your background. It's interesting that you'd really just completely fresh to it because obviously you've mm -hmm. taken to it. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's you know passion drives you. I suppose it's really easy yeah. to pick up new things when you're driven like, like that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, okay. okay, I think yeah, it just depends. So it, the thing, the yeah. thing with um, sort of like Deneb and SVG, I found them really easy to pick up because mm. it's it's you know. Daniel describes it as a visualization grammar, and it, it is. It's like, mm. it's not like um, programming or anything like that, you know, where you have to update events and all that kind of stuff. It really is telling the visual or the whatever, the tool, you know, what you want out of it. Um, and it's 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 easy to read. Yeah. So you can you can start by copying things, and then you, you look at it, and you, you can actually read and understand what's going on quite easily from someone that's got no, no background. Same with SVG and things like that. So then being able to to go and write it is hmm. less of a barrier. I think if for what I've seen, if you kind of understand the concept of a data visualization, you're right, it is easy to read because it's really just listed out what each item is and mm -hmm. what is what is where it is, you know? So if you've seen exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I'm not, I've never been a, a person that is whatever coded or data structured because it's not a code, it's data structure apparently. Um, I, I have no background in that either. Um, probably I kind of started all for me. I'd never, I never wrote a VBA because, and I, I look at them and I'm like, yeah, I probably can't do that. I've never really tried, but I've never really had the need to, so I've never done it. Um, but it did seem to be quite not easy, but quite self-explanatory to kind of like follow through and understand what you, what you're going to do and what you want to do. So yeah, cool. All right. I don't want to drag it out too long. I really enjoyed the chat. I hope yeah, cool. you have too. I enjoyed talking to you. I was actually really excited. I'm like, oh, um, yeah. I really follow you and I do enjoy um, listening to all your Dax jokes and Dax puns. I appreciate any Dax pun that comes my way. That mad <laughs> Dax was hilarious. I really probably belly laughed at that. That's some mad <laughs> Dax. That was fantastic. Um, yeah. I like a lot. Yeah, puns are always basically. If I if I can't do like anything good in Power BI, I just stick a pun in. Fantastic, that, that'll do. <laughs> I'm wearing a pun yeah. T-shirt as well. Ta da! It's uh, Justin Justin Timberlake's. You know. <laughs> Very good. And a dance. Oh my god, that's amazing. We're getting so much for the first ever live session here. Puns and <laughs> dancing. My god, it's fantastic. Cool. Um. Everyone who been writing questions and um, have you ever fired? Den yeah, I've fired Denup up. I've done a little bit, bits and pieces out. I was thinking about doing a Denup's type video. I have to learn a bit more about it first before I do that. I think um, because it's, I think it's a really cool thing to kind of look at and just another possibility that people maybe people don't know about, though it is in quite an early stage. Um, yeah, thank you for all the questions, people who have been been watching. It's really nice that people actually took the time to, to watch and see what we had to say. And uh, yeah, if anyone wants to also do one of these sessions in the future and yeah, kind of in there, just give me a DM on Twitter and we can arrange something because I am trying to make it like a weekly thing, which I think is a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a stretch, but it should be doable. Just sit down and talk for 45 minutes every is, Thursday. Is there, a, is there a lot of people you can talk to every week? I mean, you'd go through the same people, wouldn't you, eventually? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to contact everyone from who, who who I follow and follow. So if I think I follow 500 people on Twitter, and that's once a week, that's like 52 people. So I think it should be okay. Yeah, not sure. That, that will take you several years. I think I think, I think think I can make it. And if not, we'll just, you know, invite the, the, the best people back again, you know, such as yourself. I'm sure you'd make it that list, like, no worries whatsoever. All right. Cool. Thank you very much, everyone. And um, I'll be back live same time next week. Follow Kerry on Twitter. Look at Kerry's blog. It's awesome. She does amazing stuff. And she's apparently helped someone get a job. Amazing. And she taught me a, a new skill. So very happy with that. Cheers, everyone. Goodbye and have a lovely evening.